guys, welcome again to your own YouTube channel, Ask Your Gynecologist. I'm Dr. Sodak Barihar. So as you all request every time, I always make a note of your requests and this time the video is Hydrocephalus. As the name indicates, it's a Greek word. Hydro means water, cephalus means the skull, the head. Okay, so now this is not a very common problem, but again, it's not very uncommon also. Around 1 in 1000 babies is suffered from hydrocephalus, just like Down syndrome, 1 in 1000, so it is almost the same rate. And uh, it can happen not only in children, it can happen in adults as well. When you are an adult, the causes are different, the prognosis is different, the treatment is different. So before I actually proceed, uh, towards this video the details of this video let me just thank you all because we have already crossed 8.5 lakhs and we are soon going to be 1 million family so thank you very much for liking my videos and it is because of you all that within one and a half year we have crossed 8.5 lakhs okay now um, there are many questions on most of my videos if you actually open the video which is around six months or seven months old even older than that there are almost 1000 questions on every video now, how do you expect me to sit on the YouTube all the time and answer all the questions? So many people are angry that man, we don't answer. Just imagine how can I answer this? I have got loads of other things to do. I'm just trying to help you. It's like a social service. I'm trying to make these videos very descriptive in a layman language so that you understand what the problem is and then you can understand well, very well uh, your own doctor's advice because when you go to the doctor sometimes the doctor doesn't have time to explain what's going on so once you listen to me then you can probably understand more the problem that you are suffering from but in case you want more answer from me answers from me then whenever I go live on this channel or the other channel Dr. Sona's answers which is specially for live sessions I go and around once or twice a week I go live so you can use your debit card credit card the YouTube has given you the facility you can pay you can start just from a very small amount of 40 rupees you can extend it to 100 or 120 whatever depending upon the length of your question so as soon as you do that the question flashes on the screen and then I see it and I answer it if you need a prescription because it is not possible to give a prescription on YouTube or you need a second opinion and your uh, reports have to be exchanged then you can always use Docwise app. Now it is an online application. If you are sitting in America you can consult me. Many patients are doing that. Sitting in America, Saudi Arabia they consult me. So it is basically you just need to be good with the spelling Docwise and then you put my pin and then you get connected with my mobile. That's it. It is me who is answering. Many people are actually... Um, hesitant or probably they are uh, suspicious at who is answering now this mobile is handled by me it is my personal mobile right so if you put up a question within 24 hours i will answer if you don't get the answer the money will be refunded so it's not a big amount it's just 370 you get two days to chat with me you can exchange your reports i give you voice message i give you prescription generally you get the answer in writing because it, it is online you cannot see the doctor there is an option of calling on indian number but Right now, for the last 2-3 months, there is some problem going on. I have already complained, but there is some network problem. Okay. Now, the third way to consult a doctor will be the best, which many patients are doing. Come to my hospital, that's their address. Take an appointment from my secretary. There are two numbers. One is a calling number, the other one is a WhatsApp number. Okay. So, you can always make sure that before coming, I am in the city. Okay. So, do that. And that is the best way to consult me. So, coming back to the topic, today's topic is hydrocephalus. Now, hydrocephalus, as the name indicates, means water inside the brain or outside the brain. Now, water, no. It is CSF. It is cerebrospinal fluid. And it is basically manufactured. It is secreted from the cells in the brain. And then it circulates in the rooms, which are called ventricles. There are four ventricles in the brain. It circulates there. There are ducts. There are certain roads which help the fluid to circulate and then it comes out from the brain and it flows throughout your spinal cord. Now, the spinal cord is covered with three membranes. So fluid, it flows around the spinal cord, it makes it supple and there is some amount of pressure which is required for the normal body functioning. Whenever this pressure increases, you have problems. The brain gets damaged, the brain gets a lot of pressure, the spinal cord gets a lot of pressure and why does this happen? It can happen either because it is getting manufactured too much the body is producing too much fluid which is not able to which the body is not able to excrete or there is some obstruction at some level it can be an obstruction in the in between the ventricles that is in between the four rooms that the csf is getting blocked at one particular place it's not moving outside or all the four ventricles they are communicating they are good there is no obstruction but when it has to come out of the brain there the obstruction is there so what happens the pressure builds up inside the brain so that causes hydrocephalus now in adults, because they are big, 
the skull is already joined the bones have already joined together the joints are uh, made and the meninges the membranes which are covering the brain are thick enough so there is no acid increase in the csf pressure but yes if there is an obstruction because of either a brain surgery or meningitis that is an infection in the uh, brain in the brain membranes or stroke any internal bleeding because of high blood pressure any blunt injury to the skull now any reason which can probably cause an obstruction in an adult that will lead to hydrocephalus it will be mild it will not you will not see an adult with a big head suddenly right so because it doesn't make the head big it happens only in babies but in adults they do have symptoms they can have fits they can have other problems because we are not going to discuss this because it is a neurology department uh, problem i don't deal with hydrocephalus okay in adults so i need to tell you as an obstetrician how common and how does it happen in children so as i told you this is the way this is the uh, the pathological uh, the path pathogenesis of production of csf now if there is a blockage then it becomes a communicating or a non communicating hydrocephalus communicating is the one in which the four rooms are communicating with each other there is no problem within the brain the ventricles but when it has to come out there the blockage is there okay so now communicating hydrocephalus can be divided into two one will be a normal pressure that is the brain doesn't develop a lot of pressure yes there is an obstruction so there is hydrocephalus but the pressure is not increased second is the hydrocephalus with very high pressure in which the entire brain has got damaged the head has become so big it is full of fluid the brain tissue is absolutely gone and then this child definitely will not be compatible with life and the doctors will tell you this will be diagnosed on an ultrasound that the brain tissue is almost gone it is all full of fluid okay so it can be very dangerous now coming to the uh, communicating normal pressure hydrocephalus in this case as i told you the pressure doesn't increase so obviously this will happen either because of some bleeding inside the brain why this happens well it can be just certain some infection inside the brain which happened probably because of some trauma something which probably we didn't know something happened inside the brain it can be because of some mutation some sporadic mutation that suddenly some genetic problem occurred in the brain there may be some obstruction then the, it can be some genetic disorder which is carrying on in the family like sex linked disorders or equidectal stenosis or dandy walker malformations all these are some kind of obstructive uh, hydrocephalus which can be genetic or it can be just simply sporadic okay now sometimes the child might be suffering from other problems like spina bifida i have already made a video on spina bifida how the spine of the baby doesn't get covered and it opens up again it is not very common it is not as common as hydrocephalus but it can coexist then there is some herniation of the brain from the from the uh, skull from where the spinal cord uh, comes out so if that is there that is called encephalocele sometimes hydrocephalus comes hand in hand with encephalocele or because of spina bifida such children with multiple problems are not compatible with life and the doctor will tell you that you might need an abortion as long as the baby the problem is diagnosed within 20 weeks because 20 weeks is the legal uh, age at which till which we can conduct the abortion now uh how do you actually cure this well the cure is obviously you you cure the cause right if it is too much formation or if there is uh, some obstruction the csf cannot flow out of the brain is causing a lot of pressure then you, then we normally put a tube from where the csf is not able to come out and then it drains from inside inside the tummy so once it enters the tummy it goes into the peritoneal cavity and that gets the body gets rid of that excess fluid so that is a tube which is permanently inside the child and um the prognosis will depend upon the diagnosis the age at, at which it was diagnosed then how much brain damage has already occurred the surgeon of course the expertise and of course the follow up so if you actually look at it then the mortality rate that is children dying because of hydrocephalus is just 3% especially the ones who have already had a successful surgery and after surgery for one year almost 70% children will have no symptoms and if we follow them up for 10 years we don't have any study after that for till 10 years around 30 to 35% do not have any symptoms now this depends again as i said depends upon the diagnosis depends upon what was the problem how early the surgery was done now what all it can cause well it's brain it has different lobes frontal temporal occipital every part of the brain is important for functioning so sometimes there is memory loss sometimes there may be paralysis even after surgery sometimes uh, the brain might be damaged to an extent that uh, the milestones are damaged uh, or not well or even death as i said it can lead to any symptom right because it is a matter of brain and the diagnosis is only only made by ultrasound when the ch child is inside the tummy once the child is outside the tummy when 
the outside world or in an adult, MRI and CT scans are the best ways in which the doctor can tell how much damage has happened, how much brain tissue is damaged, how much is irreversible and how much is reversible. Okay, so it all depends how we manage it. So now I think um, you are well aware now that why hydrocephalus happens, what is the mainstay of treatment that is surgery, if at all the uh, child is compatible with life. Okay, so in case you have any more questions, please inbox. I will try and answer them in my live session. Otherwise, Dogboys app is always open for you. So till then, take care. Till I come back with a new video. Bye-bye and take care.